Everyone wants to live an inspired life, yet so many people search for happiness following the footsteps of peers and taking advice from people who have different values and outcomes to which they're searching. There are people born into wealth, graduated from the best universities in the world, and there are people who have none of that and yet are living extraordinary lives full of fulfillment and reward. The purpose of this podcast is to share insights and strategies that allow you to question the status quo and think freely so you can design your life and be who you want to be. We get one life. Time is our most valuable asset. I believe that when we're free and able to focus on meaningful work, we become better human beings. This is Always Free, and I'm your host, Jason Greystone. Welcome to the leading podcast for financial empowerment and wealth creation. Subscribe to this podcast so you don't miss an episode. You can connect with Jason on social media and subscribe to the Jason Greystone YouTube channel for weekly videos. Don't forget to also subscribe to the weekly newsletter to receive frequent educational content and action steps to help you design your life so you can be who you want to be. For news on all future events and updates, go to jasongreystone.com. Well, 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 welcome back to the podcast, guys. I hope you had a great week so far. And uh, if you're listening to this first time, this is the number one podcast for financial empowerment and wealth creation. And if you just listen to this first, uh, this is your first episode. After you've listened to this one, in fact, you may even decide to stop listening to this one and go back to episode one. I highly recommend you do that. But If not, enjoy this episode and then make sure you subscribe to this podcast so that then you can go and listen to the rest. Every week I get messages saying how people have binged, you know, 10, 18, 20 episodes uh, in a very short period of time. And the reason that is because uh, the way that I kind of constructed the whole podcast is a is, is a journey, a strategy. So you can, it's kind of the more you go back and, and listen in order, the more you're going to get out of it. All right. So this week, uh, I wanted to talk about uh, disappointment because I this podcast is really about empowerment and and living an inspired life and. Uh, I was I got a message from someone the other day, and they were basically saying how they wanted to learn how to trade the financial markets, and they wanted to be a trader, but they was worried about disappointing their parents. Uh, this was the actual parents in in this particular dynamic, and I wanted to talk about disappointment here because, and in particular, you know, friends, family peers and all that kind of stuff. And I want to share with you my view on disappointment, okay? And it's really important. This is an important subject. Uh, If you want to build wealth, the biggest limiting factor in building wealth is a a guilt or a a shame, which might be linked to a feeling of disappointment. So I want to address this. I think it's important. So if you're an entrepreneur or you're going to do some business or you're thinking about doing something a bit different to the majority of the people uh, in your life, okay, you're likely to get grief or hassled from your family or your friends or from people in your kind of circle network because they don't have the same vision as you. And listening to their advice stops a lot of people going and doing something that they want to do. And the reason it stops them doing what they want to do is because they're just not aware of certain social um, dynamics, okay? So before I really get stuck into it, the first thing you have to understand is that everyone, as I've said before, everyone has a hierarchy of things that are important to them in their life, okay? They, the values, right? The desires. The, and you'll have a list and there'll be an order, Okay, there'll be an order of most important things right through to the least important things. Now, understand that the thing that creates that list are voids. Voids drive values, and in particular, the voids that you had in your life. Okay, the things that you thought were missing, particularly as you were a kid growing up. And those things will be higher up on the list of values. If you perceived as a kid that you didn't um, maybe have a... Uh, a father figure or a male role model in your life, you could have a void of that and you'll dedicate a lot of your energy to going and trying to find that male figure in your life. If, or if you're a man uh, and you had, a, you know, you perceive there to be no f- male figure in your life, you might now really have a high value on being a stable father or a, a partner. 
okay? You've probably seen people go and do that. And the same goes for money. If you perceive that you didn't have much money growing up and it was a pain point for you, and that was a void for you, you could carry that through to your adulthood and you could potentially, and most likely, uh, put that as a high value for you. So your voids in your life become your values and what you thought was missing as a kid very, very often becomes your values as an adult. And if you look very closely, you'll probably find that in your own life as well. So knowing your childhood uh, voids and then knowing your adult values and knowing what's really important to you is a big insight. It's a major insight. So if you're going to go and do some trading or become an entrepreneur or start a business or whatever it might be and put yourself out there in the public eye, maybe, okay, you've got to know what's important to you. You've got to know why it's important to you. So first of all, it can pay massively to just go back to your childhood and see if there was any clues there as to why you might value certain things, okay? And then once you've realized that and and you've realized that you have values in your life and you have this hierarchy of things that are important to you in a certain order because of voids, then you realize that everyone else on earth has their own hierarchy that's unique to them because of their own reasons, And that has everything to do with what they heard growing up, what influence they had, you know, the influence they allowed into their lives, what advice they've taken from people, people they've subordinated to. So look, if you have money or business really high up on your list, okay, and I know a lot of the listeners who listen to this podcast have, and then you have another person in your life, maybe your family members who have money and business way down on their list, right, because they've got other bigger voids, okay, what's going to happen is you're going to dedicate a lot of your time and energy to money and business, and that person won't. They won't dedicate much time to money and business. They might have been brought up believing that you just get a job to pay the bills, right, they might be someone who believes in retirement and all that stuff, you know, stuff that was invented by corporations. They might just see you doing what you love and hammering the laptop and saying, look, you need you need to take some time off the laptop and relax and watch TV or something. And you're thinking, well, why would I want to do that? Why would you want to watch TV if you don't value it? You know, it'd be more stressful <laughs> to stop what you love doing and then go and watch TV. And their perception of what life you know, should be like, might be working the day, TV at night, because that's the way that they've been indoctrinated and that's the way they've set their values. And work isn't work if you do what you love, right? Work is a belief. Retirement is a belief. It's not a real thing that you need. It was just invented for people who are going to, you know, resent their job from day one or were just getting a job for money instead of turning their hobby into an income. So between those two people, there'll be this kind of projection injection argument going on, okay? So one person might say, look, you're working too hard. And look, if you're not aware of their values and you're not aware of what's going on, you might say, well, what do you mean I'm working too hard? You know, and you might even, um, you know, fight back. You might say, well, you don't have any money. You hate what you do. You know, you have, you don't have any business and money and you're always moaning about, how you wish you had more free time from your job or how you could free up your time from your job and get away and go on holiday and all this kind of stuff. And you'll be fighting with the person because what you are doing is just not that important to them. Because, you know, maybe their biggest values and their biggest voids in childhood was social and family. So when they say you need to go and spend more time with family and you need to chill out more and relax more and all that kind of stuff, all they're doing is projecting what's important to them onto you. Okay, and as I say, if you're unaware of that and you're not attuned to that, you could bite back and fight back, and it's a futile argument. You're wasting time and energy because you know you're basically projecting onto each other's w- what's most important to you. It's a complete waste of time. So just know that your values are created and ranked along with your journey based on perceived voids. Now, if you were brought up by a family with a certain set of values, which is what most people were brought up with, okay, their parents had a certain set of values which they were exposed to, then whatever that is, whatever those values are that they expose to you, won't be a void for you, right? So if your family was, you know, very family orientated, family, family, uh, but they didn't go and do money or business because it wasn't important to them, well, guess what? It could be a void for you. 
and you could take up the money value or the business value, and this is very, very common. This is like my story, okay? The family all mingling with other compassionate people moaning about money on the estate every Friday and talking like they were poor, and then the next thing they were buying a syndicate lottery ticket, and we would be hiding from the bailiffs, and we couldn't pay the electric meter sometimes, and I saw a contrast, and I had a massive void there. Money was a a huge void, so I took up money, and there's many others like me. So when you want to go and make money, the parents with the family values might say, you shouldn't be focused on money, you shouldn't be spending so much time doing money and business, right? And the projection injection argument begins again and if you subordinate to your mum or your dad and you want to try and please them okay which is what 99% of kids want to do they want to go and please and appease their mum and dad and make them proud then what we have is what we call a moral dilemma okay to go and make them proud it means you've got to go and do what's important to them not you In fact, if you want to make anyone proud, you have to go and do what's important to them and not you. They're not going to be proud of you and your values because if your parents' values are family, guess what? They're going to be most proud of you when you go and spend time with your family and your grandparents and your brothers and sisters and all that, right? And you call them every day. But to you, that's not a void. You want to make the money or the business or have the adventure, the travel and all that kind of stuff. And vice versa, okay? I've seen people live their entire life. I've seen people in their 40s, 50s, 60s, okay, now, who have sacrificed what's most important to them, their highest values, to go and try and please and appease people um, in their other values. And it takes until a midlife crisis for them to realize, bloody hell, you know, what have I been doing my whole life? I've been doing all this stuff that I hate just to go and get some kind of praise from my parents or peers or social group, and they've basically become praise slaves, okay? And this is what will hold you back. I see this really affecting people's lives. One of the wisest things that you could do is just spend some time looking up family dynamics, okay? If you put an entire family into uh, a a bowl and mix them all around, right, what you're going to find is a perfect blend of all the traits to empower all areas of life, okay? Research has shown that, you know, one sibling might be academic and one will be creative. if If one sibling's family, the other will be social. And research has said that, through evolution, it's how we've been developed to survive the longest, have the longest possible chance of survival as a pack. So one gets the money, one gets the food. And it's like a diversified skill set and value system. It's almost like a perfectly orchestrated allocation of values so that one sibling can focus on one thing, one sibling can focus on another thing while the parents are focused on something else. And as a team, they have the highest probability of survival because all the bases are covered. So if you don't give yourself permission to honor the area where you're really most inspired to pursue and empower yourself in that area, then you could be trying to do what they say or what he's doing or what she's doing and you basically shut down your own light. You just try and copy everyone else. And if you do that, the whole family falls over. I see in so many families where they all wake up in the morning and they spend their whole day thinking that they should be doing something else to, and it holds them back from doing what they want to do. You know, instead of going about their day and just doing whatever the heck they want all day and telling their other family members to do whatever the heck they want all day, okay, you find this kind of, uh, this limiting uh, voice in their head holding them back because they're trying to live into everyone else's values and it stops them going forward. So, you know, whenever you hear people say things like, we should be spending more time as a family, ask yourself this, why should you? You know, when that voice comes into your head, who are you looking up to at that point? What are you basing that on? Because the truth is, everyone just wants to get on with what they want to do. So although, yeah, you can build in balance uh, of, of habits to you know have dinner together and lunch together and go for walks and things like that, if you find yourself saying, we should be spending more time together, ask yourself why. Because all that's going to do is stop you from doing things that you want to do and you're going to go round in circles. In my family, 
I wake up every day and do whatever I want to do. I tell all of my family that you can do whatever you want to do. And that's the most important thing. If there's one thing that frustrates me, right, it's people who hear something and then take that stance without conducting their own research and truly coming up with their own opinion, right? They follow the buzzwords without doing any research or actually taking the time to set their own view based on their own values on the matter. There is no right or wrong. There's no such thing. It's just value systems. And people who go along with other people, I really struggle to have a conversation with because there's there's nothing, there's no substance they're just saying things because they've heard it. And this podcast from episode one has been designed to help you challenge and question the status quo. You know, think about, ask questions because people are going to be projecting opinions onto you all the time. And people who think things are right and wrong are simply comparing to their own value system. There is no right or wrong. Now, people who are more influential will have the ability to project their opinions and thoughts into your mind sometimes. And if you're not careful, that's what will happen. This has been happening for years, right? Religions, politicians, celebrities, brands, okay? Advertisement, influential people. But just know you can only disappoint someone based on their own values. And as I say, the best thing to do is ask yourself, the person who's kind of projecting their values onto you, ask yourself, do they have the life that I want? And understand their values and see why they might think that you're a disappointment. What happened, you know, what do they value? What happened in their childhood? Why do they have their list of values in a certain priority order? All right, so just to give you really a practical example of all of this, what I'm talking about here, let's just say uh, that there, I'll, I'll kind of give you an example of how this works in all different dynamics. Let's just say there's a man who... Uh, loves going out drinking and clubbing, okay? And we've got a a club owner, a, a club and restaurant owner, and we've got a health and fitness expert, okay? Or a health and fitness service provider, okay? And there's a man that loves going to the club. He loves spending all his money on drink and he smokes and he goes to the kebab and he buys the food in the club and he does. he spends all of his money doing that kind of stuff. Okay, now the if the fitness owner was to say to the man, um, "How about you join my gym?" the the guy who values going to the club with his friends and spending all his money on drink and booze and smoking and eating and food and all that kind of stuff, he will say to the fitness guy, "I don't have the money for that." Okay, now the month the guy who's the fitness owner will say to them, "What you're doing is wrong." right? Now, let's just say that the guy who keeps going to the club does that for too long, and he ends up getting very unfit, and the doctor gives him an ultimatum and says, look, if you keep going on the way you're going, you're going to have a heart attack, because you're obese, your arteries are clogged up, you know, you're drinking too much, you've got, you know, you've, you're killing yourself inside, and if you don't stop this right now, you're going to die, right? Now, all of a sudden the values will shift because there's a void, there's a health void. So the guy will change all of his habits from going to the club and eating kebabs and drinking and smoking all that to buying health foods, to going over to the guy who's health and fitness and getting advice from him, being coached by him, spending his money on running shoes and health foods and a lifestyle change, okay? And if the guys who went out to the club said to the man, do you want to come to the club now and come out for drinks? The man might say, I don't have the money for that because he shifted his money into his highest values now. And the friends who are still going out to the club will say to the man, you're wrong for doing that. Okay. So that's a kind of complete cycle of how people project their values onto you depending on what their values are and how you're a disappointment. So when the guy's going out to the club, the fitness guy goes, you're a disappointment. And when the guy gets healthy, the friends go, you're a disappointment. Now the major insight here is not once the entire time that the guy was going to the club and all the rest of it, did the friends who he was going to the club with say, you should get more fit. And not one time whilst the man was with the fitness instructor ever did the instructor go, you should have a balance and go out with your friends more. Because 
they're not they're not on that person's values and just the same as family orientated people the whole time you're with them they won't say to you you should do more business so my advice is to imagine everyone on the planet who wants you to do a b and c the government the society the parents the grandparents the girlfriend the boyfriend the husband the wife the friends and all the people that you know think that you should be doing something don't do what you want to do and Tell them that they should just focus on what they want to do. And then everyone will live a very, very empowering life. So there is no disappointment. The disappointment that's commonly confused is not living up to someone's values. That doesn't make you a disappointment. There's the only way that you can truly feel like a disappointment is if you don't do what you want to do. Because that's what your inner voice is telling you to do. Listen to your intuition. That's the only thing that you don't want to disappoint. Otherwise, you'll end up full of resentment and regret. So that's it for this week, guys. Uh, hopefully, you enjoyed that. Hopefully, you got value from that. If This, this is a message that a lot of people need to hear. Um, I truly believe that when we're free and able to focus on our own purposeful, meaningful work, we become better humans. And just by sharing this message around, other people can empower their lives. Other people can take control of their lives and not be pushed around for the short time that they've got on this planet so please share this with other people guys and until next week have a great rest of your day and weekend and i'll see you then Subscribe to this podcast so you don't miss an episode. For news on all future events and updates, go to jasongraystone.com.